Today we're going to fly a test in this airplane. Our goal is to compare true airspeed to indicated airspeed at different altitudes. First there's a theoretical projected difference and then there's the actual observed difference and that's what we're going to test. Let's start with some agreed upon definitions. There's four commonly accepted types of airspeed. Indicated airspeed is the value shown on your plane's airspeed indicator. It's a measure of the difference between the static air and the pressure of air entering the pitot tube in flight. As you climb higher, air becomes less dense and so the pressure exerted becomes less. You're actually flying faster than the indicator shows. Calibrated airspeed is indicated airspeed adjusted for errors induced by pitot location or installation. For example, if your pitot tube may be in an area where there's some turbulent airflow that affects its readings at times, that's why during test flights, you'll see planes like this one with an extended pitot tube way ahead of the airplane to sample the air unaffected by the airframe. The pitot tube in my RV-12 sticks out ahead of the propeller, and it's the first part of the plane the relative wind encounters. I think there's little to no difference between indicated airspeed and calibrated airspeed in my plane. Equivalent airspeed has to do with compressibility of air at high speeds like you'd encounter in a jet. I don't think my RV-12 gets close enough to the sound barrier for this to have an effect, so I believe the equivalent airspeed and the indicated airspeed in my plane are one and the same. True airspeed is what we're here to test. You can't measure true airspeed, you only calculate it. Now there's a formula that takes into account the indicated airspeed, the temperature, the humidity, and the altitude to compute the true airspeed. The rule of thumb, though, says that the true airspeed is about 2% greater than the indicated airspeed for each 1,000 feet above sea level. Today, we're going to put this rule to the test. We go flying. That looks like we're above the clouds there, but no, that's smoke instead. Somebody is apparently doing a controlled burn, and off into the distance you can see a second burn going on too. But now back to our test. This is a shot of my flat screen. I'm going to take pictures of it in flight, but first I wanted to tell you where to look. So here of course is the indicated airspeed. Just above it is the calculated true airspeed. At the base of the screen is the outside air temperature. And upper right on the screen shows the density altitude we're at. I plan to do a step climb after takeoff, stopping every 1,000 feet starting at 2,500. I'm going to set the power at 5300 RPM and let the speed settle, turn on the autopilot for level flight, check around me for traffic, and then snap a photo of this screen in flight. It'll be smoother higher up, but this is me trying to hold the camera steady down low. The RPMs fluctuated as the autopilot tried to hold a level attitude. Engine speed really doesn't matter to this test since we're comparing airspeed only, but I did want to try to keep the power the same for the whole test regime. At 2,500 feet, the RPMs dropped about 60 while the autopilot pitched up in turbulence. So here we go. I'll show you the readings at each 1,000 foot stop. Then we'll record the readings in a chart and discuss. Here we are at 2,500 feet. I'm showing 112 indicated, 115 true. 3,500 feet, 115 indicated, 120 true. 4,500 feet, 112 indicated, 119 true. 5,500 is 109 and 119. 6,500, 106 and 117. 7,500 is 105 and 118. And 8,500, 103 and 117. Now, here's a chart summarizing the readings that we got. Following the 2% rule, we had 2% of indicated airspeed per 1,000 feet. So the expected value at 2,500 feet for true airspeed is 112 plus 4% 4 of 112, which equals 116 knots true airspeed. We got 115. A math purist would say, hey, wait a minute. You should add 4.2% to account for the 500 feet. Well, if you do that and you round down to the whole number, you still get 116. So I ignored the 500 feet at all altitudes. 
I'm a VFR pilot, but maybe if I had thought ahead, I would have made the measurements at whole thousands of feet, but here we are anyway. In fact, all of the actual true airspeed values are within one to two knots of what's predicted by the rule of thumb. Keep in mind that the true airspeed is calculated by my Garmin electronics, and that temperature plays a role in the calculation. Notice that the outside air temperature doesn't follow the temperature elapsed rate of 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. Maybe the outside air temperature didn't have enough time to get the proper reading as I climbed. That would affect the computed true airspeed value displayed on my EFIS screen. I think now that had I stayed at each one of the altitudes for a longer period of time to let the avionics settle down some more, maybe I would have come to within a knot or so of the expected true airspeed in each case. Maybe even got a perfect match. So that's our test flight today. When I can, I like to show pictures of planes that fly into my airport, but before I do that, I want to share this with you. At the end of this video, you'll see my plane in a circle like the one pointed to by the arrow. If you click on that circle, you can subscribe to this channel. Quick and easy, and it's free. If you like what I'm posting, please subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. There's already over 65 episodes covering all sorts of aviation topics out there. In fact, I'll put links to three of them next to the circled plane. I appreciate you watching and subscribing, and I'll work to make my stuff interesting to you. Now, here's a couple of jets that stopped in for fuel today. We get quite a bit of jet traffic here at Pickens County Airport. Now, check out this really sweet Pitts aerobatic airplane. And that's it for today. Stay tuned to this channel for upcoming videos. See you then.